Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is DMAC and today I'm going to be doing another video using this uh, Euro cutaway I made. This one was made to a lock noob recipe. If you just uh, search on YouTube uh, lock noob uh, cutaway cylinder how to make or something like that it should come up with the, with a link to that video. Uh, very easy to make uh, these and I, yeah, I recommend it. But what we're going to be using it for is to pick these pins here. So if you saw a recent video of mine, I'll, I'll try and put a link to that at the end of this video. Uh, it was making these piston pins. So what we've got there is we've got a little cup section on the left there with a serration. And then we've got this section here with a little ball on the end of it. And so what we've essentially got is an articulated ball joint in there. And that allows this pin to kind of flop around all over the place and cause lots of problems. Um, but I've made these videos, uh, sorry, made these pins. I haven't actually uh, picked any yet. So this morning, let me just get these up in my hand. This morning I made a bunch of these, so I've got some uh, long one, quite a long one there, that one's slightly shorter, um, and that one's uh, got quite a big uh, ball section, sorry, that one's got quite a big uh, cup section on it. So it's just to see how the different designs picked, I think some of them, uh, that one there has got much more of a tapered section. Uh, compared to say that one there, which is is quite straight in the middle, uh, but I thought I'd make a whole a whole load of them, and then uh, I can pop them all in the training lock, and we can just see uh, how they pick. Because um, let's just grab this plug out. So I've got the key pins in there. Um, I'm not sure of the right orientation of them really. I think it might depend on the key pin height and the lock, so it just gives me a chance to play about with it. So maybe it would be better that way around with a cup at the bottom. Or, or towards the uh, the key pin, or maybe it would be better that way around. Um, and again, it depends on the key pin height. So I'm going to put some um, with that little cup facing up, some with it facing down, and we'll just uh, yeah have a play with it, see how they pick, and it will give me a better idea of uh, how they work in a lock and where to put them in challenge locks. I'm not even sure. I'm going to got five here. I'm not even sure that all five in the same lock will work well or not, but I'm going to pop in um, just a, a standard pin in one of the uh, one of the chambers, because otherwise, um, if you don't have a standard pin, you just have all spools or all of those piston pins, then it's going to be a very sloppy sort of lock. So um, I'll just put one standard in there, and we can see how the others kind of behave, and whether or not it's suitable to put all five in a lock or not. Um, but yeah, quite looking forward to it. So I'll do. I'll get the lock set up get it all clamped up in the vise um, and then we can uh, start picking it and see uh, how it goes. So we've got him all set up in the vise there, um, just testing that the key is working fine. And I'm going to use a uh, top of the keyway um, with a Mad Bob's bendy wrench and a scimitar from Lawlock. Um, this is a Yale keyway, it's the Y1 keyway. So it's very paracentric, and you'll see me curling that pick around to try and get these uh, pins to set. Um, it's worth saying that uh, I'm narrating this audio after I pick this lock. Um, just gives me, uh, it allowed me to concentrate on the picking, and hopefully give you a bit of a better commentary, um, concentrating on what's going on. So you can see there, we're just setting all the pins. Um, I'll, uh, as, I, as I narrate it, I'll um, talk about chambers one, chamber six, and uh, you know various chambers. But as you look at it there, chamber one is the one on the right, and chamber six is the one on the left. So I'm just on pin two there, trying to set that one. And setting pin six there, on pin two again, and everything's dropped down, I'm back to the start. And I did find that that happened quite a lot with this lock. Um, I was constantly dropping uh, pins. I think that's because the um, the piston pins um, they kind of move about quite a lot, um, as you can imagine. Uh, you get kind of full sets, and the plug is moving um, relative to the lock body, um, and that just means that you know things can can drop and they get twisted uh, quite easily. You see there, I keep. Uh, set in uh, pin 6 because pin 6 kept on dropping down when I was picking this. I think although I, I put the drivers in in such a way that they matched with the um, heights of the key pins to give um, 
most problems when it was picked. Sometimes you just get quite lucky, and in this case, uh, pin six uh, was just placed. Um, as you can see, pin six is a standard pin, but that was placed um, in such a position that it just kept uh, dropping down. Um, so I was regularly going back there to having to reset it. You can see there I'm on pin one, and you can just see the counter rotation on the tension wrench. Difficult to show that on this video from the angle we're looking, but you can see the light changing on the tension wrench, and that kind of uh, demonstrates that I'm having to counter rotate the plug uh, um, to allow that pin to set. So it's just six to set now, but he is really stiff, and you can see the pin is kinked as I as I uh, allow it to counter rotate. The other pins drop down, and this was a pattern. Um, for picking this lock, it happened again and again and again. Um, I did actually record this a couple of times um, because, um, yeah, I'm just going for a deeper hook there on the pin six. Uh, because uh, halfway through one of the recordings, my dog started barking, and another recording, my sleeping wife decided to wake up and start talking to me. Um, <laughs> so I decided to re record it. But that, what that meant is that I was quite familiar with the binding order and it always seemed to be that pin 5 was the last to set and yeah trying to set him I inevitably I just I just dropped other pins um, and so it was a case of two steps forward and one step back constantly with this lock I think that if um, some of these uh, pins uh, were tapered um, to, towards the shear line then um, they would drop even more so that's certainly something that I took out of this that I'll be um, implementing in the future with uh, when I put these into challenge locks so I think again it's I think pin 3 just needs a little jiggle I think yeah just on that there and so again it's just pin 5 to set oh no pin 1's dropped down counter rotate for that one. Oh, looks like it's been over set Yeah, so it's just been five again. But uh, as you can see, I'm just I think I'm just swapping back to the scimitar hook. Just really struggling to get up to him. I don't know if it's getting up to him or that because it's kinked, it's kind of catching on the shear line, um, and that just um, means that I've got to put a lot of pressure manually counter rotate the plug, and that causes all the other pins to drop down. But I did uh, get lucky here actually um, just I overset pin 6 there and accidentally set almost set pin 5 so uh, pin 6 yeah, pin 6 has dropped down and pin 5 um, is almost set I think it needs a little jiggle um, and then that will be set and that meant that um, I was then able to oh got the pick stuck um, deal with the other pins not having to worry about um, the problems I was having with 5 and uh, yeah, just pin one to set there, and there we go, I got the open. Well, that was uh, a whole lot of fun to pick, and of course by a whole lot of fun, I mean complete pain in the ass. Um, I think I got lucky with the um, placement of these pins, um, as we saw pin five in this particular lock uh, caused us all sorts of problems. Oh, it's just over set there. Yeah, caused us all sorts of problems. Um, with that cup just just getting caught in the shear line and sometimes you get lucky like that when you when you put pins in uh, I mean if I jiggled these around um, put them in a different order it might be a whole lot easier to pick so certainly when you're putting these into a challenge lock or any, any pins into a challenge lock it, it helps to sort of play about with the order and find the one that causes the most pain um, so yeah we had some of these orientated like that one with a cup down um, and then I think in three and one um, that cup is facing up and that caused us a lot of problems as well we got some real deep full sets and had to counter rotate a lot when uh, pin one was uh, being set so it just goes to show that these piston pins uh, depending on the keeping heights uh, can work uh, well in either orientation um, so yeah that was uh, a, a lot of fun to pick I think the other takeaway from this is that I would probably uh, taper some of these very slightly um, on the end that's uh, going to be meeting the shear line because I think that will enable them to to, to drop um, and cause whoever's picking it to, to having to keep on set them. 
and keep them going around in circles and keep them guessing and after all that is what challenge lock pins are for um, anyway that's all for today uh, thanks a lot for watching i hope you enjoyed that i'll leave a link to the the piston pin making video i did um, just up there so you can have a look at that and perhaps give it a go yourself anyway thanks for watching and bye for now